In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of my techniques of how I create a very good marker base and then turn that ugly marker base into a finished complete drawing. So watch the video till the end. Hey everyone, welcome back to another new video and as you can see I finished my sketch previously and it is a very detailed sketch. I marked every single thing that I want from my reference and for today I'm going to be using the skin tone markers from Mohuhu and these are really good alcohol markers. I used these markers in two of my previous videos which I think you shouldn't miss so I'll leave link to both of them in the description. And as you can see this is the reference that I'm using. Using the color swatch card I'm going to pick out all the colors that I need for this particular drawing from the Mohuhu marker. Set. And these are the colors that I initially picked but as I was drawing I used a lot more than that so I'll leave the names of all the colors that I use in the description so don't forget to check that out. Right now I'm lightening the sketch with a kneadable eraser because I know that the alcohol ink will dissolve the graphite because I've had the experience in this video so don't forget to watch that video the link is in the description. I'm starting with the lightest colors first because markers are worse than watercolors or color pencils because if you lay the color down once then that's it you cannot do anything about it so if by accident you add any darker color to the place that you don't want then there's nothing you can do so it's always better to start with the lightest color and then slowly move on to the darkest colors. Now I'm going to move on to the next color. This is kind of like the transitional color, but I just wanted to check the skin tone if it is right or not. That's why I'm adding this color now. And once I'm done with this color, I will start adding the darkest shadows that I can see in the reference image. And I'm starting with the darkest brown. I want you to take a pause, hit the pause button and guess the amount of time I would have spent for this particular drawing because I'm sure that you will be shocked at the amount of time I spent on this one and I'll reveal it at the end of the video so watch the video till the end. Now back to today's video, I'm not only using a few different colors, I've selected few five but I'm using a lot of different colors. I'm taking advantage of the whole color palette that this skin tone markers has to offer and I'm using lots of transitional shades also. I'm using a lot of midtones. and the main goal to create this particular marker base is to sketch out all the areas that you can see in your reference image. This is just the skeleton of our final drawing so you need not worry about blending the colors perfectly because we are going to be using color pencils on top of them so all you have to do is block in all the colors that you can see in your reference if you understand your reference correctly then this base is going to be just like a coloring book you just have to lay down the colors and that's it for the lips i'm using touch cool markers for which i have a review and i'll leave a link to that in the description box down below for this whole particular drawing i would definitely say the lips were the toughest part because there were lots of subtle color changes and also there were lots of hidden hues. So I took a lot of time for the lips. When it comes to the color selection, I want you to focus on the lightest color that you can see in your reference and the darkest color that you can see. You need to pick out these two things first and then you can choose your transitional colors. And why I say that is because when you can see the lightest tones and the darkest tones, it will be so easy for you to see all the mid-tones. So develop an eye to see all the highlights and shadows and also there will be a lot of hidden hues in any realistic thing. For example, there will be a lot of color in the skin. It isn't just one simple plain color, there will be a lot of hidden hues. For example, the highlighted area will be much um, yellowish and the darker areas will be much brownish in this particular portrait. And also it was on the warmer side. I can see lots of orange and red in the shadows in these areas. So you need to develop an eye to pick out all the underlying colors so that you can make your drawing look amazingly realistic. Once I'm done with this particular layer, I'm going to blend everything with a colorless blender that comes with the Ohofu marker set. And this is not the final step and also it won't give you a perfect blend between the markers. It is just going to get rid of some of that marker lines but not everything. Once I'm done blending it, I'm going to check for the contrast. This drawing at this stage, it does look nice. There is a bit of contrast but I want even more contrast. So I'm adding lots of shadows again to the darkest areas and you can see what difference it makes in just a few minutes. I almost forgot to tell you but if you are given the option to buy a brush tip or a chisel tip, always choose the brush tip because it is so much easier to blend than the chisel tip. This is my final marker base done and as you can see there is a lot of difference between the previous one and this one and I actually like this drawing at this stage. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. 
for the color pencil layer i'm going to be using stettler watercolor pencils and i have used these pencils before in one of my portraits drawing where i drew wonder woman and i leave a link to that in the description and i chose these pencils because there's a lot of colors i can choose from this is a 48 color set and also i'm using my navneet color pencils I just made a quick color swatch of all the colors that I selected because I just wanted to make sure that I picked the right colors. I'm going to start with the lightest colors for my color pencil layer also because as you know, it is so hard to erase a color pencil, it's not easy. So I just wanted to be careful even though I had a marker base. I'm going to start with the lightest color first and then I'll slowly move on to using darker colors. As you can see, I'm starting with the eyes first for this particular color pencil layer because I think eyes are the most important feature for anything. So I just want to nail it down. I want to get it perfect and I want to spend all the time for the eyes first. Even though it's half close, the eyes are very expressive for this portrait and I want to capture that emotion very well. And that's why I'm drawing it first. Now you can see the advantage of using markers as your base because it just mapped out wherever the colors have to be so I don't have to think about the color palette. I just have to go in with my pencils and all I have to do is to make all the marker lines go away and also to correct all the shades that I can see in the reference. Sometimes it won't be so accurate to the reference if I'm using just the markers. That's why we're using color pencils. You can correct everything using your color pencils. So to recap everything, you have to create a base layer with markers first and you just have to map out all the colors where they want to be, where they have to be and for your color pencil layer, you have to focus on blending the marker lines by layering lots of color pencils on top and correcting the values, correcting the contrast that you can see in your reference. One of the major advantages of using marker base is that it saves a lot of time and also you can use lighter colors on top of darker ones because the alcohol ink is just going to stain the paper and nothing stays on top like color pencils. So all these lighter colors will show up on the marker base better than just with color pencils. As I told you before, you need to develop an eye to see all the hidden colors inside your reference. And as you can see, I added burgundy, orange, yellow to some of the regions and it completely changed the hue of the whole drawing. You can see a huge difference to the marker base and this particular layer. The best example that I can give you from this particular drawing are the lips. There were lots of color changes and there were lots of pinks, reds, especially where both the lips meet. It was quite reddish and I had to lay lots of color to match my reference and not just red not just brown I had to mix lots of colors the biggest advice that you can take away from this particular video is to pick out the right colors for your drawing if you choose the perfect colors for your drawing then I'm sure that you're going to end up with a realistic looking drawing if not realistic it is going to be close to realism because if you develop the eye yeah I know I'm saying this a lot but if you develop the eye to see all the hidden hues I'm sure you're going to select all the right ones if you want more tips on how to select the perfect colors then let me know in the comment section down below Moving on to the fabric that is draped around her head, I used a very different technique. First of all, I focused on blending out all the marker lines that I can see in that area. And then what I did was I used a darker color and then with very light pressure, I just shaded it. I didn't burnish anything, I didn't do any crazy technique, I just let my pencil glide along the paper and I'm using the texture of the paper to my advantage. I'm using hot pressed watercolor paper so it is going to have some of the texture so when I glide my pencil along the paper, the grains of the paper are still going to show through and those grains are going to act as my highlights for the fabric. And since I'm using a darker color on top of lighter one, it is going to be like freckles, like some spots are going to be dark some spots are going to be light and this gives me the perfect texture for the fabric and also I'm following along the direction of the weaves of the fabric because if you take a close look at any piece of cloth then you can definitely see the weave lines where the threads cross over each other and those are going to form some natural lines on the fabric so you have to pay close attention to every single detail from your reference image once I'm done with this step, I'm going to add the brightest highlights that I can see in her eyes and then I'll move on to the skin. 
I'm almost done with the whole portrait. All I'm doing now is I'm just checking the contrast and since some areas were not smooth enough, I'm burnishing them. For burnishing, I'm using white for the lighter areas, for example, the highlights on the nose, lips and under the eyes. And for the other areas, I'm using a lighter color than the previous layer. For example, I'm using a skin tone to burnish all the colors around the chin and the cheeks comes the most amazing part of the whole process and that is taking off that masking tape. It is always satisfying. And do you remember I told you to guess the amount of time I spent? Well, I spent around 4 hours for this drawing. Yes, you heard that right, only 4 hours. I hope you liked this video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye everybody!